Hi, hi, good morning and welcome to today's products in focus. So a little bit of a turnaround in the markets yesterday after being down in the doldrums yesterday morning. Uh, we were trading below 17,747. Markets have sprung back into life in Europe and the US uh, as we approach the uh, Fed FOMC meeting at uh, 7 p.m. UK time for the for the minutes there. Uh, markets just shooting on up, uh, US market in particular, Germany 30 up and UK 100 up as well. We do actually have a death cost here in the moving averages, but it's not really slowing down the US 30 right now, whereas other technical indicators are quite neutral. We've almost got a bullish crossover on the MACD as well. So next potential resistance actually is all the way at 18,112. So we are actually in the middle of two ranges. Do you see potential uh, support down here, potential resistance at the top. So moving on to the UK 100, uh, I had been looking a lot uglier, real strong hammer formation right here. So it was a lot lower, trading below 6686. Uh, it's now moved up a little bit. Now we're in the middle of two ranges, 6686 as potential support, 6771 as potential resistance. So then we're having a look at the Japan 225 um, with the dollar yen still sticking at 123.55, not really doing a huge amount. Most um, Asian markets actually down a little bit as the Chinese stock markets have lost about 5% since uh, since Tuesday, so since yesterday. So they've been getting hit a little bit hard there as well. Potential support at 20,087 is at the potential support level right there. Other technicals are relatively neutral. You do have the MACD, uh, not really doing a huge amount. Um, and this would also coincide with that 55-period SMA. So right, right now we're on the wrong side of the other moving average. Um, and uh, arguably we are looking at this trend line having actually been broken. But it's 2087 as a horizontal potential support level. If that breaks and we trade below the 55-period SMA, the next potential support would probably be the tip of this candle down here. Uh, closer to 19,000 and that would, wouldn't be so great for the Japan 225 but the Chinese market is getting uh, hit hard quite right uh, hit hard at the moment um, but they are trading at incredible valuations relative to their earnings so looking at dollar yen uh, we are um, around this uh, 21 period SMA almost like a kind of a pendant or a symmetrical triangle formation after the sell-off 124.42 still remains a potential resistance um, any sell-off there could be contained by the next potential support at 121.87 uh, but it's not happened yet obviously FOMC tonight is going to have a big impact on that so um, West Texas crude uh, not a huge amount to talk about here consolidating around about 59.50 um, we are st it's still a bit of a dollar story and an oil production story, global demand, everything else. Um, probably not a lot of eyes on this at the moment. Looking at gold, uh, it failed to capitalize on the move beyond 1186. This level's been uh, strategic for, uh, well, it feels like forever really, to be honest, but uh, since October last year. Uh, a failure to break through again there on Monday. Uh, a retracement back up towards it yesterday failed to materialize and we're down a little bit lower today. I wouldn't really expect the markets to be doing anything too crazy before the FOMC tonight at, at 7. Obviously people are still talking about Greece but the more um, articles and the more commentary and the more analysis I see in that whole scenario, um, the more it feels like Greece might actually default and um, that the only way, way out for the political party there is either for them to stay the course and leave the eurozone uh, or for there to be uh, a change in, in government across there because they won't be able to fulfill their promises if they bend over for the eurozone creditors they'll have no credibility as a political party because that was their whole mandate uh, uh, the whole platform of, of, of election so i really feel that the uh, the greek um political parties, Riza, they, they only have one choice right now and that is to, to stay the course and it's not going to end well, I don't, I don't feel. Um, but the market's taking it very much in a stride, the euro's not getting hurt, hurt that, that much in the back of it. Um, Greek stocks incidentally are getting absolutely hammered. Um, I wouldn't be that surprised if uh, Greece nationalises its banks very shortly because there's such an outflow of capital uh, there at the moment. Um, and that would be a precursor to them defaulting on their loan and that they won't be part of the Eurozone for that much longer. But, you know, these things do one minute, it's definitely going to happen. Next minute it's looking unlikely. A deal could still be reached, um, but at what cost really? And uh, We'll find out over the next next uh, couple of sessions. They've got till the 30th of June to make this next payment to the IMF, but this weekend's their last opportunity for a, a big 
uh, a big breakthrough in negotiations and it just feel kind of distant at the moment. But looking at euro dollar, it's not really massively impacted, consolidating around about uh, 112 60 ish, um, with one spot 11 being the potential support. Longer term potential resistance still remains quite far away, incidentally, one spot 1642. Almost got a bearish cross there on the MACD. Other technical indicators relatively neutral. Could be get could get additional support from these dual moving averages right here. So one spot eleven is very important for uh, euro dollar at this conjunct at this conjunction conjuncture. If we break below that, uh, that wouldn't be so good. But I'm very surprised the euro has been so resilient when there's so much uncertainty kicking around. GBP USD smashing it, uh, moving up very very nicely right here. Uh, one above one fifty six. Happy days. One spot 57.43 is the next potential resistance, and that would coincide with a, a kind of more, you know a year high almost. If you look back here in December last year, we're not that far away from there just now. So if we break above those May highs, we can start to think about one spot 59, and then we're very close to breaking psychological one spot 60. Um, so GBP USD is certainly looking interesting. Now today you do have the Bank of England NPC minutes, so that's going to be um, interesting for cable traders and UK 100 traders as well. Uh, the, the guys are going to come out with a statement as well, talking about um, the number of votes they have for, two, for, for and against a rate hike. Uh, obviously it's probably going to be 0 and 9 incidentally, but uh, you never know what else might come out in the written statement. Then we've got unemployment um, change data all coming out at 9.30, more Eurozone inflationary data, so, and that's been ticking up surprisingly for some strange reason. Uh, so CPI due at 10 a.m. UK time, and then finishing up with crude oil inventories, and uh, then of course tonight's 7 o'clock, the FOMC. Remember we do have a webinar tonight, you go to support live trader events and you can sign up to our live webinar. Uh, and that's going to be a very interesting session, uh, no doubt. For some reason, some commentators are coming out and saying, oh, we think they're going to be way more dovish than expected. And then on the backdrop of all that, all the macroeconomic data coming out of America is better than um, the estimates. So things looking kind of interesting uh, out there in those markets. I'd be massively surprised if they're very dovish, but maybe the Americans want to keep their currency devalued. They don't want to spook the markets, but they're still trading at still relatively high levels. Well, you have to tune in to find out what happened next. So join me again tomorrow and we'll go through the details then. Take care. Bye-bye.